Well, the, the two cars that are here, the Barbarossa and the Quick Plow, these are the true witnesses of the very beginning. Yeah. And when you dig deeper, then you hear incredible stories, how critical it was seen to come up with this new car. Will it be a success? Will it be a flop? This video is brought to you by American Collectors Insurance. Protect your passion. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. This car here that we're looking at, which is a prototype of the 901, which was built in 1963. But the real history of the car, I started to have an interest many, many years after I actually drove the car. I have to tell you the story, how it all started. My father found this car at the Porsche dealer in Stuttgart, the Hahn company and it was uh, damaged in the rear and it was missing the motor. So my dad thought that could be a project for his, at that time, 18 year old son. And uh, he bought that car, brought it home as a surprise. And he said, so my son, this could be your first Porsche. And, uh, but you're not going to get a 911 motor. We put a 912 motor in. And uh, so we fixed the car and I didn't like the color of the car at that time. It was not a, an en vogue color for me. Uh, I painted it in blue metallic, which was the latest, the newest, great blue color from Porsche. And uh, upgraded everything around it, put 911S wheels on and put the, uh, the bumper guards of the 911S. And uh, for me, the car was always something second or third class because it didn't have uh, the details of the of the modern 911 when it was built at that time. And I drove the car until 1971. And in 71, I had a, somebody who wanted to buy my car. And it did not happen. And I tell you why, because he wrecked it on the test drive. He drove it in the ditches and uh, damaged the car. And then I put the car aside and I said, well, the fate of this car is something interesting. Maybe it was not meant to be sold. And so at this point, you don't know it's a prototype still? No, I still didn't know. I knew it was something special. Okay. I knew that the car was something that they were trying and working on. It had a funny chassis number that nobody has ever seen before. Mm -hmm. 13326 never goes into the Porsche system of chassis numbers because the first production car started with 300. Mm -hmm. And uh, this 13326 number was looked like a 356 number, you know? But at that time, there was no interest. I didn't have second thoughts. The only thing I knew that the, the title book, the German Fahrzeugbrief, was written with a, was he, by hand hmm. and um, with an ink, um, a, with a fountain pen. Yeah. And uh, you could see Porsche AG was the first owner. Second owner was Hans Metzger. Oh, but wow. nobody knew who Hans Metzger was at that time. Really? These people were not known. You know? I mean, today they are our heroes. Yeah. Uh, but see the the porsche company was just 15 years old there were no books out there there was no uh, no stories to be told from porsche at that time because the company was so young and uh so i learned about these heroes of course later when i met mr metzger and uh, then later when i learned that this was also the first test car for uh, ferdinand ph it was his wow, first really? car he drove it for one and a half years wow. until he sold it to hans metzger yes That's fascinating that, that. And uh, in the 80s, I started to learn about 901s and prototypes and first information was given out. And then I learned that this was the car, what it was, that it was the first show car for the London show, Earl's Court, Earl's Court yeah. in, in October of 1963 already, one month after Frankfurt, when the first launch happened. And then afterwards, the car was used in Geneva in March of 1964. And at both times, it didn't have a running engine. It had a, a mock-up, a wooden mock-up engine in it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It looked like a real engine. Sure. Yeah, yeah, to keep yeah. the weight down, I guess, yeah, in the it, back. Yeah. Maybe they had to adjust the torsion uh, bars. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and now it's almost impossible to buy a prototype. Yeah, they, they, I think all, they destroy them or they put them in the uh, museum, storage. Museums, yeah. storage, or destroy them. Because yeah, liability, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think they don't want of course, a prototype. Yeah. But, yeah, but at that time, everything had to be made into money again. Wow. Know? So... Uh, and moreover, it is the car with the five instrument dash, the first one. The first, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because the red one had two instruments, right? Exactly. When yeah. you look at the red car, 
it has what we call the Graf Gertz instruments. Graf Gertz was uh, the designer from BMW. Oh, okay. And uh, he did the 507. Sure. And the 507 instruments were brought into Porsche. But look at the red car. From. This okay. is where it comes right. from. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. And it had the painted dash, the, mm -hmm. the body paint. And uh, it, it had different features, but that dashboard didn't represent Porsche, actually. And I, I think uh, there was a, a discussion going on inside uh, the company, what would be the better dash. Hmm. And then they came up with this five instrument dash. And, and so this car is very special. Yeah. It's yeah. a really trailblaze for Porsche. Yes. So look that it would continue. Right, for years. right, right. And, and the, the pad on top of the dash didn't even have a provision for a speaker, you know, because it's really full prototype. Wow. And uh, the back uh, paint of the of the dash was not body color, it was black. But in this car, they used a crinkle finish, like they have in Italian cars. Italian dashes from Ferraris, sure, you know, and Alfa Romeo, uh -huh. they have yep. the crinkle finish. And they tried that out. That was never tried out at Porsche before. So that makes it very, very special. And uh, the first time they put a wood trim, it's a mahogany uh, wood trim on the dashboard. So that was the first car that represented the dash that became the dash later, you know. And there's still another neat control in there. The air control is from the 356. Oh. One-to-one, one, take it into the car. Yeah. And then there are many other details. If you look at the, the sill of the, of the door sills, the, the rubber and the uh, chrome trim is from the 356. Uh, the uh, window, side window, side glass crank is from the 356. The armrest has a little rocker underneath to open the door, to, um, to open the door, and uh, it was many little details. The, uh, the side vent is made in plexiglass. Oh, wow. Uh, the, the, the quarter uh, glass in the back is fixed. You couldn't open it. Wow. But, uh, so there, there are many, many details. Then also the, uh, uh, the springs for the engine lid are true springs, not the famous uh, lifter mats, you know, the gas springs that always wear out. Yep. And it, the same thing in the front, they have a torsion system like the Volkswagen had. Wow. Keep the front butter that way. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> so how long did it take to restore the car to the condition? We started uh, in in 2020, now we have 23, 21, it was finished. But I didn't show it to the public at that time. I just kept it for myself because I wanted to wait for its 60th birthday, which now happened in August. So it just stayed in storage? Yeah, and I drove it from time to time. So it was finished since 2021, and we started the restoration in 19, so over three years. Wow. It was not nonstop because we had always other projects too, but little by little it all happened. And it's the type of a project where you cannot have everybody work on it. You have to have very sensible with the, the right people to bring them step by step, say, look here, because my first questions of all my employees, they questioned me because they said, but boss, I have never seen that before. I said, yeah, sure, you didn't, but I saw it. <laughs> I drove it and I had it. <laughs> you and, know? and I know it's called Quick Blau. Is that, was that the name of the color? Or that was the, the nickname because of that color. You know, they had that, a color, 36 color. Uh, it's a 356 color. It's called uh, Emile Blau, okay. which translates to enamel blue. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And so when your father brought this home, were you in love with the 911 or were you hoping oh, for totally, it? Totally, 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 yeah. totally. I, I must tell you another little story. In 1964, before the 911 was shown to the public, well, it was shown in Frankfurt in 63 as a, as a show car, uh, but before you saw one on the road, my dad and I, we were driving on the Autobahn in a very, very rainy day. It was awful weather. And uh, here a car flies by. And I believe it was this car because I saw it was blue. And there were only two blue prototypes. There was Quick Blau and the other one was called uh, Blaumeise. And uh, the Blaumeise was in a darker, it was uh, a darker blue. And uh, this one was still shining in that bad weather. And there was a huge fountain of water spraying from that car. And our wipers of the car hardly took the water away. And I heard the sound of that engine the first time. And it went into my bone marrow. Because uh, the 911 sound is something so unique. You know, of the early 911, there is no other car in the world that has a similar sound. Well, thank you. It's sure. It's really brought the car to life. And uh, thank you for bringing it here to Rensport. It is 60 years of the 911. Yeah. And... Uh, 
and looking back to the beginning, uh, people uh, will better understand yeah. uh, why the car became so iconic. By the way, since 1975, I'm a member of your club also. That's or phenomenal. Also. Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're proud to have you as a member. Okay, buddy. Thank you so much. Sarah Rental Union celebrating 60 years of the 9-11. Hard to believe it's been that long. It sure is. As with any model, you always have the prototype, the vehicle that come out before the production model. From here, Don Melusio, who owns one of the 901 prototypes, and there's not many out there left. It's two left. So, two yeah, left that's it. Porsche yep. So having around. And the development process, like any model, was long and things changed. And, but we're used to seeing it on 911. They have not been there originally. The way it was, uh, yeah. How long have you owned this car, Don? Sure, 40 years. I, I bought it in 1983 uh, on Jerome Avenue in New York City. Um, it was for sale for 14 months. And uh, I think a couple of things, people, it was just another rusted out old 911, so a lot of people didn't care. Um, it was odd, but nobody at that point knew it was a prototype. And, um, he was asking a lot of money for it. So I often say that I was the only fool that was willing to spend enough money to buy it. Uh, but, you know, I mean, some of the things, when I first bought it, I don't want to jump ahead, but I sent a letter to Porsche saying, I have this car with a, a five digit serial number. And they, they sent me a, a fax back that said, we never build a car with a five digit serial number. And I said, I sent back, well, yes, you did. They sent back, no, we didn't. So. About four months later, I got a letter that said, apologies, one of the workers here who's been here 30 years remembered and said, yes, we did build a car, build cars with five digit serial numbers. So that was the first thing we conquered to admit they built it. In 1983, I went to Selimsey to go to Butsy Porsche's office because I'm thinking that, you know, it was Butsy's design. I want to show him all these pictures and show him what's going on. So I called his office and his secretary, Mrs. Siller, said, do you have an appointment? I said, no, I don't. She said, come tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. I said, I will be there at nine. I got there at nine o'clock and she said, I'm terribly sorry, but Dr. Porsche is not here. And I said, oh my goodness, I came 3000 miles. She said, apologies, his mother passed away last night. He left a English speaking engineer and a German engineer who worked at Works One in 63. So, he said to, he kept shaking his head no, and I kept saying to the Brit, what's wrong with him? He said, he doesn't believe you. So I looked at, at the German and I said, what don't you believe? He said, it's how you say California bull. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and what is? The sunroof. We never built a car with a sunroof like and that. And so your sunroof is the center yes, sunroof yes. that moves forward, forward not backwards. Yes. And he said, we never built one like that. So I said, well, yes, you did. And I started giving him all the reasons why. So the Brit says, wait a minute, doesn't Hansi, and I think you remember this story, it doesn't Hansi in the body shop, didn't he work at Works One in 63? Yeah, he did. He says, call Hansi. So he calls over and he's standing over on the phone. And he's, yeah, 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 oh, 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 okay. And he hangs up. He says, we build it. I said, that's what I've been telling you for the last 20 minutes. But so we conquered those things of, you know, we didn't build a car with a five digit serial number. We didn't build a car with the baloney sunroof. Uh, and eventually start, people started believing things. I started getting letters from the factory saying, okay, we do, we've spoken to a fellow that worked here for 30 years. He does remember the car. And then they started, what could we do to help in your restoration? So obviously the most visible difference in the body is the sunroof. Yes. Being center mounted. What other parts look like it would, would have been a production, but may not be but something they put on production. Yeah, you, well, one thing that, that isn't anything to do with production or prototype, again, this car was built by Porsche. So the body and um, the sides are much flatter. And I don't know if that was, we're thinking aerodynamically, maybe that was smart, but you can look at another, another 911 side by side. This is much flatter. This window is longer and it's a tiny bit higher. You mentioned, uh, you said one thing you said that I noticed, you said the body was made by Porsche, and that's because normally they have a coach builder that makes their money. Yes, yes, and, and they did Reuter, and they did Carmen. Uh, and there were 13 prototypes, so we didn't mention, this is number seven, 
they were almost all five digit serial numbers. I think the last two were 300001 and 300002 were prototypes. Um, but you know, that's kind of how you know the so, so I look at the door and it looks like a 911 door, but yes. yeah, she said it's actually a little it is, different. It is different, you know, and you, typically you look at this car, take a glance, and it looks exactly the same as a 911, but it, it's surely not. Uh, the one thing we look at is the round gas cap. So, which is, is you know, I don't know of another that we ever saw. Um, you know, most of the um, prototypes were crash tested. So, you know, they were all destroyed. So I'm looking at the, uh, we, we were just talking about the window. At a window, this may or may not be a factory piece, or not factory piece, but production piece. Production piece, yes. And those the side windows are plexiglass. Oh. Yeah. So maybe again, you know, who knows why that only the side vent windows are plexiglass, but, you know, again, you know, you're making this car and it's not like you can go to the parts department and go get a glass. So the next uh, visible thing is the, the dash. The dash. Because one of the nice. iconic things yeah. of the 911 yeah. is the five gauge dash. Yes. Yeah. But it wasn't always the case at the beginning. Correct. So this let's is, take a look. This is referred to as the Gertz dash because he was the designer. Uh, he came from BMW. These are gauges out of a BMW 507. Do you have a theory of why they would have used the BMW part with all the Volkswagen? Forces? You know why? Yeah, why they use Gertz to do that? And you know, Aloise's car 13326 has the five gauges. Sure. So uh, you know, who knows? Again, his car was, I believe, and again, who am I to say what it was? But his car was more for show. This car was for testing. Sure. And like I said, I think they beat it pretty hard. So of course these cars, the HVAC was uh, still being evolved on almost all cars of the era in trying to, uh, you didn't have air conditioning. Correct. So yeah. you were trying to get, uh, when it rained, you, you would do what it did. Get the air through as best you could, yeah. And so you pointed out to me something that I seemed like it was a pretty good idea, but it like, evidently didn't work on how to get the uh, side window, side quarter window defogged. So you've got this crazy ventilation system that the air comes out of here, out of the dash from the defrosters, comes over here into the door panel. These are balsa wood, it's carved out. And then right here, the air exits and it blows on the side window. And it's supposedly to, to defog the side windows. Well, it doesn't do a thing, but it, it's a good idea. It was a good try anyway. I have a, a lot of, I got a lot of research information from Jens Turner in the archives department. And I have a bunch of road tests by Helmut Bott. And some of them are really kind of cute. Uh, Helmut says, when you crank the window up, you bang your knuckles on the dashboard and you can kind of see it there, how, how close it is to the dash. Also, he said that uh, when you don't sit in the seats, you sit on them. And I guess I, they just don't kind of form to your rear a little bit. Now the seats themselves, you're explaining, well, this looks like as close as it came to production, but it's not. It's, it's not, it, it's very flat and it's very soft. And um, we did it, you know, just the way uh, it was when we found it, um, where I think the production cars is a little, you know, a little more Porsche-ish. It's, it's firmer and um, your butt kind of plants in it. He also said that sometimes in cornering, you slide around too much on the seat so they added the oh darn handle over there to grab a hold of as you're cornering. That, that did not make it to production, but uh, I believe Alois has one also, and, and so do I. And again, that was there when, when we found the car. Now to me, one of the things that really stands out that's iconic on a 911, and to the point that Porsche has put it on all their cars, is the left-hand ignition. Oh, again, thank you, you know my car better than I do. So yeah, it's, it's actually, I was told from a VW bus, but the ignition key goes on the steering column on the passenger side, just like, uh, you know, your Dodge, Dodge van, so. I would have loved to heard the discussion about how that about moved that, from yeah, the column right. to the uh, left hand. Of course, I'm very happy that they did that because that's really stands out on a 911. And just looking at the dash and the radio panel, I can see the differences than uh, what they ended up putting on production. Um, and look, and I guess judging just from what you're telling me about the notes that, that they put on the car, um, this really was a truly a research vehicle. Oh yeah, you know, oh yeah. Something that they, uh, yep. 
they decided, yes, we go forward with this. No, we don't go forward with this. It was used to test heating, um, front suspension, engine testing, and uh, aerodynamics. So if it was used to test heating when you restored it, did you find a lot of panels that oh, patched? Yeah, thank you. There's, uh, I guess they tried different ways to get heat up to the, engine, at the uh, compartment of the car. So they would try things, and then when they decided they didn't work, they would just cut out a little, get tin snips, and get a little three inch circle of metal and drill three holes and put three sheet, sheet metal screws to hold that panel down to cover them up. So there are oh, quite a few of them, probably three or four places on the body that they are to. But that really had to confirm to you that this was really what it was. Yeah, or what it was used for, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, know, so you yep. wouldn't find that on a production car. No, no. one would cut up uh, just for cutting yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, really, yep. Um, I'll, um, I'll pop the deck lid. Now again, when I say pop the deck lid, this, why this didn't stay is beyond me, but it's a spring-loaded deck lid. So you don't have to have somebody pull it up when you pull the button or just, you just pull it, watch, here we go. Oh, you're right, yeah, I love yeah. that. So it, it's great, and again, I don't know, maybe it, was, maybe it was a cost thing, maybe they're afraid that somebody pinched their fingers, maybe they thought, afraid that the spring would break, but, and then the coolest thing is it's adjustable. Like, I wanna know who the engineer was decided to make the, the deck lid spring adjustable. So it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Another thing while you're right there with the camera, the oil tank. The, you can see the oil filler originally, it stopped right there. And then they added a piece and stopped it right there. And then they must've said, yeah, you know, take it a little further. Probably what was happening, they were pouring oil in and it didn't have enough of an angle, the oil was probably spilling out and getting all over the engine compartment. Yeah, I wish somebody would have complained that that oil filter was not in the best location yeah, for changing that's oil. You are kidding. <laughs> yeah, and that spills all over the place. Sure. Yeah. Um, air cleaner, and different than Aloisa's, um, very different air cleaner. And I, the, the pictures I've seen in some of the, the old um, uh, Porsche books, they show several different air cleaners, so I guess they weren't settled on that either. Oh, and, and something else, well, well, two things. This, this panel uh, on the production cars has all the indentations for, you know, the little the uh, sheets for labels for uh, tire pressures and valve lash and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's all flat. Uh, this, this car, the rubber for the rain, keep the rain is down below. I believe I saw an Aloysius, it's up here on the deck lid. And um, this, this panel is different. So again, different body company, you know, so diff doing different things. I think an exhaust is the first thing that rust. Yeah. So when you bought the car, did it have this exhaust or did you find this out later than it used? It, it did, but it was extremely rusty. Um, a, a little you know, kind of side note that um, we couldn't find heat exchangers because they were, the early heat exchangers were different from the ones that were in production. So we found there was a dealer, I believe it was in Tennessee, who had, back in 64, Porsche was um, reinstalling different heat exchangers. So it was like a recall, the early days of recalls. So this dealer had kept some of the ones that he took off of cars for, to do warranty work. So he finally gave in and, and sold them to wow. us, yeah. So was this engine that you found one that was roughly in that serial number yes, range? Yeah, it's, it's close, yeah. And again, we knew that this car had many, many engines in it because they were constantly changing things and trying them. Well, this is just uh, an incredible piece of history and an insight into how Porsche produced cars. Yeah, Especially sure. this, this momentous changeover from the 356 to the 911. And uh, who would have thought that 60 years later uh, they still be making 911s and celebrating the uh, yeah, yeah, they, iconic they look cars. Look so similar. So many things have changed in this world, but a 911 is a 911. Yes. It, it just doesn't change. And you know, I, I have a 21 Targa, and I don't know how you can say this, but I swear it feels to drive the same. I realize everything's been changed, and it, but you you see the same. The good vision, the good handling. It's the same darn car. Well, I think uh, the 100,000 people coming to Rents for a reunion this year confirms that they did a great job of detaining <laughs> that so. spirit I think so. of, the, uh, yeah, yeah, of the 911. Sure. And of course, the Porsche driving experience uh, that we still celebrate this car as well as the new cars. Mm -hmm.